Hey, Captain, please. Okay, um, the producer asked me to talk about Ralph Cook. Now, um, uh, Ralph Cook is not living anymore. And we don't even know if his influence is still living. Because I, I would say that he was a tremendous Balregas, an emotional person. And he, he wrote things he, he was feeling. He was feeling Ruchnius, feeling Kedusha, feeling the closeness of Hashem. And he was writing according to what he was feeling. And what what did he ask in a local mice what to do? It could be we know it, could be we don't know. There are different gears, there are different schmoors, different rumors, different different sources that say different things. Whatever you whatever you want to say, he was definitely a tzaddik. Of course, uh, you have to always remember what Rav Nachman Breslover says in the Sibur Maish. There was such there was such a thing in one of the stories as uh, crazy tzaddikim. How does he say? Mishugoyim is that how? Mishugoyim. They mix the dust. It was a dust. dust and the uh, one dust, dust you come and saw it, and one dust when they walked machine. over it, and then there's dust that made people tzaddikim, and when they mixed the two dust, it uh, came out tzaddikim mishugon. I mean, there is. I, I don't want to. I don't think it's so nice to use the word mishugon, Rav Cook, <laughs> but I would say confused. Um, his his tremendous emotions. Uh, led him in different directions, and and uh, he made mis- He definitely made mistakes. Uh, there's a video that's available that you can find it in the internet, where you see Rav Cook and Rav Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld. They went into some uh, great uh, minister. Or the who, who, who was I don't know who it was, but like a long line of people went in. The Chosheva people went in to say shalom to this to this uh, uh, great messiah uh, that came. Maybe it was from England. And Rav Yosef Chaim and Rav Cook both went in to him to to greet him to say shalom aleichem. So you see, when Rav Cook came out, you see, you see the look on his face. He's looking around, turning his head from side to side, and he's grinning, and he's feeling so good. And uh, Rabbi Yosef Chaim came out, and you see the look on his face. No, so what? As if, like, you can't hear what he was saying, but it's like saying, no, so what? Uh, you, you see the difference. Rav, Rav Cook was looking at like things are happening in the world, changes are happening. Uh, the British, uh, maybe the British, uh, conquered Eretz and drove away the Turks, and we're making progress, and things are getting better, and there's kedusha all over. <clears throat> And every nation has sparks of Kedusha in it. Isn't it great that I was able to greet this high, maybe it's called the High Commissioner, and, uh, and he's uh, glowing. Rabbi Yosef Chaim, is, he's like the practical, the the the, the rov, the, the posik. Like he's saying, is this... It's as if he's saying, is, is this what's going to get us closer to Avodah Hashem? Is, is our Limud HaTorah going to get better? Is our Kim HaMitzvah going to get better? If yes, yeah, so good. If not, so no. And so what? And what's a Sar? What is it? A Gosh Kesar. Hayam Kanu Mokar Bakeva. So what? And that, that's how he's looking at it. And you see the difference. That's the difference between the two drachim. Now, I, I don't know. I again, 
I said in the beginning, it's very <laughs> Rav Cook's Derech, what was his way? If he would today see those that follow him and those that go in his ways, would he say, this is what I meant? I don't know. Oh, Although, Rabbi Kaplan, what? one thing, since you mentioned this, about the people that claim to go in his ways. Hello? What did you say? About you came, you mentioned the people that claim, claim to go in his ways. You know yeah. that he wrote two, at least two, such strong letters about going on a hard bias. And now comes this Rabbi Malamed. If he was alive today, he would tell us to go on a hard bias. Oh, very good. So you see, how could somebody say such words? If he was alive today, he would. You know, why is he, Why does this Rabbi Muhammad say such things? Because he thinks that Rav Cook stands for nationalism. And that means to show that we Jews have power over here. To show we have a state, we have something of our own. And we're we're somebody, we're a nation, and we're not going to go into Harabai, so what are we? And where's your power? Where's your army? Where's your nation? Where's your Atzma'ut? So definitely, Rav Cook would have said that you should go into Harabai to show your independence. And they, these people that say that, they take this part of Rav Kook and they make it as if that's the that's the main thing what he wanted: independence, nationalism, a state, and uh, and that's uh, the most important. So that's Doha, the issue of going on the Arabis because. We have, we have to conquer the Arabis. Definitely, the, in, in our Loha, there definitely is such a thing. In order, if you have the power to conquer the Arabis from the Goyim and build the, uh, at least even not a base, I mean, it's just a Mizbech, my crib, in Alpha Pishain, Bais, it says, you definitely are allowed to go up there, but to Mahakomodim, in order to conquer the place. And, Remarkable carbon, but who says? Who says that just showing that we have power, just showing, and we know the truth that we don't have power. The world is stronger than us, and we can't go up there and show that it belongs to us without bloodshed. Yeah, without bloodshed from the Arabs. So that means we don't have power. So who says, but just to show that we think we have power and maybe that'll bring that someday we'll be able to co conquer the place and go there. Who says that's a head? Gedele Yisrael say that's not a head. Because Gedele and Rav, Rav uh, yes, you said it's awesome. I mean... I don't even know if you need a rebel Yashi for that, but he definitely said it's so. us. Shimon Paris came to visit Rebel Yashi to hear from his mouth that it's also to go and die by. So I'm saying like this. <coughs> And those that made nationalism a eager in our life, they can't understand how could it be? And, and Rav Cook was was uh, like the, the idea of nationalism is kilo. It comes from Rav Cook, and I think nationalism means that it's important that we have something. To have something it means there's a India and there's a Pakistan and there's a America and there's a Iceland and there's a who knows what and there's a Luxembourg and there's a Israel. Well, amazing. We're a nation among all the nations. We have a team, a soccer team. We could send them to play against Spain, against Brazil. We're somebody. That's important. If that's important, then you could walk on the Arab 
So uh, I, Rob Cook, said you can't walk on the Arab bus. But that was before we had something. But now that we have something on Naya, Medina, so you can't block us, so you definitely can't. That, that's how his mind works. Now, my criticism of Rav Cook is I don't believe that he meant all that. He didn't mean that. He didn't mean to say that you could take nationalism so far as to be Matthew Aisha because of it. But my criticism is that that the told us told us told us Sam uh, what came out of his Talmudim was such a person that could say such a thing that if Rav Cook would have lived, he would have said such a thing. That's a tain on him. That he gave a michshul, he put a mokum litos in front of the Talmudim Shalom Shimshu called Tzorkun, and they are able to say such a thing. And I think, and I, I, I'm not, I'm not the uh, one to go dig into the hidden ksovim that are left. We know that his son, and this I heard from my brother's uh, grandfather-in-law, that means his wife's grandfather, that he was a Talmud of Merkaz Arab, and he said that he yeah, has... Can we say his on. name, Rabbi Kaplan? Yeah. Can we say his name? His name was Rabbi Avram Gurvich. Rabbi Avram, no, I'm Rabbi Avram, Moshe Gurvich. He has a son, Rabbi Avram Gurvich. This Rabbi, this Rabbi Moshe Gurvich, he came from Lithuania. He learned in yeshivas in Lithuania and Slabotka. He came to Eretz Yisrael and he learned in Merkaz of Rav. Now, I myself heard him say that he has Ksovim of Rav Kook. And he's not going to put them out because he doesn't want to fight with Reb Tviyahud. That he said that, that he, these Ksobim are censored, that you can't put them out. Now, I'm not one to go digging into what it says there and what he wrote and what are the secrets, but I see the re- you can see the results in nowadays, 80 years after his period. I think now it's 80, more than 80, maybe 84 years. After his two, what? Eighty-two. Eighty-two years after he died. You, you see, those that they uh, say that there is mamshichei uh, darko, they're continuing in his ways. Look, look what they look like now. I don't mean to say they're not from other but they are. Now, the yeshiva in Mecca is a very from yeshiva. And they learn good over there. They probably are told me they have over there. And I'm not saying. My question is, let's take this example what the producer just mentioned. A, a person like Rav Malamed, that he's able to say that if Rav Cook would have been alive, he would have said you can go an hour by I saw other things that Rabbi Muhammad wrote. I think he wrote against the he he was Mizalzo in the Chazanish that the Chazanish was against the Heter Mechira of Shav Shmita. Now, what brought him to be Mizalzo in the Chazanish? The fact that Rav Cook made his Heter Mechira. So that gives him a right to be Mizalzo in the Chazanish. At least, let it at least be a Suffolk that Rav Cook said one thing, the Chazanish said, uh, said different, he was against it. Rav Cook, you know, did not so himself use the Heter Mechira. Oh, now, of course, didn't use the Heter Mechira. But you, uh, you can't really... Bring what about the Indian, how do you call it? Akhrayut alumi. Oh, so Rabbi Malamet said that the Chazanish didn't have Akhrayut alumi, responsive, national responsibility. He didn't worry about what the nation is going to do. How's the economy? I mean, there was not yet a state in those days. 
I guess the the Jewish economy, how's it going to run if you're going to keep Shemitah? That's what the Chazanish was missing. Now, the Chazanish was not 